Oh, hey chat. Ah, uh, I can't tell you how happy I am today, having finally finished the Elden Ring commentary recording. I have all of the footage I need, and this is going to just blow open the doors on the amount of scripts I'm finally able to put into production. I know it's been a long time, haven't been uploading a lot of videos, I know, but good things are coming. Also, I was uh, browsing through uh, some thumbnails. I think I really cooked with this one. I think this is probably the best thumbnail I've ever done. I don't know what it is. Uh, obviously not my artwork, but I don't know. I think like uh, the, what's the word? Not constellation, something something came out pretty nice. Uh, hello, Ezra. How goes it? It goes well. Like I said, videos are coming. Also, I still have to release the crate video. <gasps> I've had that ready for like half a year or something. It's been so long. It's been so long. It's amazing. So many people will still come out and watch my streams because, you know, I'm just a guy now. I used to make videos every day and now I'm just some guy. It's insane. It It is kind of like that, though. Um... Also, um, I have a handbrake active here, just rendering my way through all of the uh, footage. So yeah, and also, uh, this is a seven minute stream, probably like 15 minutes with all this pre-show we're doing. But, but, maybe something else afterwards. Maybe we celebrate, maybe we, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Hey Kai. Ugh. You know, I'm realizing I have I have time to get coffee before Mark Zerny starts to talk. Hey, Danger Man. Elite. Ugh. Stay tuned. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get coffee. Everybody be nice in chat. microphone is kind of in the way of the chat window so I'm gonna move it slightly there I hope we get Bloodborne this isn't that sort of announcement Mark Cerny is just gonna talk about how smart he is and how he made a PlayStation that's more powerful than the previous PlayStation mm. Yeah, PlayStation 5 Pro, that's possible. Uh, I would love, you know, PSP Revival. Hey, you know, we doing it? Mark? Mark Cerny? Are we hiding a Bloodborne PC port? Ooh, nah, it's not happening. Not, not, not this stream. Not this stream, you know. I wish. PS Vita 2. Ooh, PSP 3 would be good. But Steam Deck exists. Steam Deck does exist. The problem, you know, I would love for another Sony handheld, but Sony doesn't commit to those. You know, I'm not buying a handheld to buy two games at launch and then maybe something else happens. You know, you're going to have to release a lot of games. And the cool thing about handhelds, a handheld, you can just make like a four-hour game. You know, you don't, you don't need to make big games. I don't know. Biggest question is the CPU side because the rumor is basically slightly unlocked if the current CPU means higher frame rates can't actually happen in some 30 FPS capped games. Oof. Who are who 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 are I and what have I done with Asia? He would never say a stream won't have Bloodborne. This one won't. Okay. Also, I'm gonna get the coffee while this is going. Wait, this is a trailer. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, 
PlayStation 5 Pro, and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. When PS5 debuted in 2020, uh, it brought so a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay, with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. Yeah. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions That is true about world. the PlayStation 5. Just finding the last Elden Ring recording on it. And data streaming rates so high that and traversal speeds man, are essential. Man, it's better to play that thing without a massive loading screens. You okay? I'm working on it! Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside. That is incredible. I love that feature. It's so good. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness oh, of game old, experiences. Though. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. Mm. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance this better not be a patch rate for the pre-existing PlayStation 5 because I just finished recording Elden Ring and I'm not doing it again for those extra frames. Mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We oh. want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to, at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Nice. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. And nice. finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. Pisser. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles, and with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing, with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but at double the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much choppier. Huh. And it's definitely pathetic. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. That's pretty cool. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5 both of which target 60 frames per second. 
But yeah, wait what a minute. Wasn't The Last of Us Part detail. 2 a PlayStation PS5 4 title? Sharper and crisper Why didn't the PlayStation 5 version run at 60 FPS? This, What's going on with that? Parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural This cars. is such a sad showcase because... So overall, they're talking about like, look at those extra pixels we PS5 added there, Pro, we can see way in the background where it doesn't matter. Smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. It was a remaster. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail when are the PS5 games coming out? Power is they just released Concord and it flopped, and so because you guys aren't buying them, they stopped making them. As well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Jar of orders. Good enough for me. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well. Particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates, the faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real yeah, difference. Yeah, Astrobot did come out. That was pretty cool. Allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy, allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. You'll never break! Like, you know, fair enough. It's just like, a new, it's not, they didn't promise new games or anything, but, you know. Did I do it? Oh, what is this? What's with all the neon? One game station five pro. People wanted a stronger place in five, and this is it. Not sure why you're complaining. I'm not complaining. I explicitly said that this is what they are uh, promised. I'm just saying, you know. Don't you think it's kind of pathetic? Like they're wheeling out the smartest man in the industry and he's like talking about how they managed to crunch, like just squeeze out just those extra little pixels and reflections way in the background of every sequence. Don't you think it's sort of pathetic? I think it's pretty pathetic. Anyways, this was the PlayStation 5 technical presentation hosted by Mark Cerny. Um, Wait, what? 700 bucks? Jesus. That is, uh, that's, uh, that's a big penny. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Is it worth it? Is it, is it worth it? You guys paying, what is those? Extra, like, two, three hundred bucks for, um, those extra little pixels I don't know but hey there was a scene here that I hate um, and no n not knocking uh, Mark Cerny I, I love Mark Cerny he's cool okay, there's a scene here they always do these this scene in these uncanny valley face games they always do this and I hate it it's this 
whenever there's like the, the for some reason like Mass Effect and drama that comes to mind, it's this specific face. They always do it. It's so disgusting. It's like you close your eyes and you just make the teeth really big. It's just I I hate seeing video game characters make this face. And I don't understand why they keep doing it. It's just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. But, uh, that's a, that's a gripe I have. It's the Fallout NPC teeth? Yeah, it's like, it's no good. 700 bucks and no disk drive. Ooh, ooh, oh, maybe. Did they not, was there not a disk version? Vertical stand sold separately. What a what a scam! What a scam! Come on! Yeah, they they look constipated always. It's like you look at those Until Dawn games, those Man of Medan, um, dark anthology kind of games. They always do that. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to do it. You could just not do it. Ugh. At this point, just save up for a PlayStation 6, you know? <laughs> uh, anyways, um, this was the Mark Cerny technical presentation. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed, but stick around because I'm going to start streaming something pretty cool uh, in maybe like five minutes I want to do it in a different um, different tab though with a different link I don't want to attach it to this um, so yeah bottom line I don't know it's cool if you want it Mark Cerny I love him love him dearly is a Elden Ring video happening I just finished recording I'm currently encoding 26 videos of Elden Ring. I already finished like 34 of them, and then I have four left to go for the end game. I have like two terabytes of Elden Ring footage now. It's ridiculous. But yeah, the Elden Ring commentary, it's gonna happen. And I have three videos that heavily feature Elden Ring already scripted, one of them recorded. I have one very heavily scripted. I just need to finalize that and I have another video I know I'm gonna make. I haven't fin uh, started writing it yet, but those are the sort of uh, the themes of FromSoft series. It's five videos I'm doing, and it's just a bunch of these recurring themes I, 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 I'm, I'm inevitably gonna talk about again. So it's like, the first one is a Kegare video, and then I will never need to explain Kegare again. I can just be like, hey, so this is that concept. Here's the video. Anyway, it's moving on, assuming you know it, uh, because I don't want people to have to... I, I, I'm so tired of always having to say it over and over again. Um, Bloodborne emulation is almost here, guys. Yeah, Bloodborne emulation is almost here. But hey, guys, I'll be back in like 10 minutes. Hope you all stick around. Bye-bye. Boop.